Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we are going to talk about the next body fluid that is lymph. Now you might be wondering that we already have a fluid called blood which flows throughout our, the body and helps to transport various substances including gases, you know, waste materials as well as food materials, enzymes, hormones etc etc. So where is the need of lymph? So why do we again have another fluid called lymph and from where does this fluid come into picture? So let us see what is lymph. It is also termed as the tissue fluid or the interstitial fluid. Why it is called tissue fluid or interstitial fluid, we will get to know about it very soon. This is colorless unlike blood which is red in color. This contain less proteins when compared to plasma. Now this lymph if you want to compare it with blood it is almost like blood just that it does not have the RBCs it only has the plasma and the if you remember the centrifugation process of blood which separated a sample of blood into its com four components so there we saw that the plasma was colorless because the plasma does not contain any hemoglobin so there is no red color in plasma so similar is the case with lymph lymph is also very much similar to plasma in fact we'll get to know in some time that lymph is actually a small portion of plasma now if you really want to know what it is, in simple terms, you can understand it in this way that when the blood flows through the extremely thin capillary tubes, you know, right, that there are different tube-like structures which we call as blood vessels inside our body and blood flows through these blood vessels. Now, sometimes it happens that some part of the blood leaks out of those vessels. Now, the fluid which leaks out is basically the plasma because the RBCs generally do not leak out. So it is the plasma or the water which tends to leak out. And with this substance which leaks out, it so if it leaks out of the capillaries, where will it go? So here if you see, these are the <coughs> capillaries. These red colored structure denotes oxygenated blood. Blue structure shows deoxygenated blood. And this red and the blue network shows the capillary, thin capillary tubes. Now blood flows through these capillary tubes, but at certain places it might leak out. So when it leaks out, where will it leak out? It will leak out into the interstitial spaces between the tissues. So these are the interstitial spaces between the tissues. If you see, this is one tissue. This is another tissue, this is another tissue, but you have some interstitial spaces or the tissue spaces. So the blood will leak out into those tissue spaces. So the blood which is leaking out is basically plasma and this plasma which leaked out into the uh, tissue spaces or the interstitial spaces is known as the lymph. So composition wise lymph is actually plasma just that it contains lesser proteins than plasma because not all the entire plasma will not leak out only some portion of it will leak out therefore only some proteins maybe the smaller ones will be leaked out so this is lymph so lymph is nothing different not a different fluid altogether it is just a portion of plasma which leaks out from the thin capillaries into the tissue spaces Unidirectional flow from tissues to heart. Now, if you compare it with blood, now the flow or the direction of flow of blood is bidirectional. That is, the central organ which is who is responsible for pumping blood is heart. Now, blood flows, the oxygenated blood or the good blood flows from heart to different tissues of the body. Similarly, the deoxygenated blood or the bad blood that comes from different tissues of the body to the heart to be sent it to the lungs, right? So that means heart has a bi-directional flow. It flows in both the direction. It flows to different tissues of the body and it also flows from different tissues of the body. But in case of lymph, the flow is unidirectional. That is, it only flows from tissues towards heart. So the opposite direction flow does not take place. So lymph only carries or transport materials from different tissues of the body towards heart. Now the question is, okay, we, we got this point that some of the blood plasma leaks out and that constitutes 
the lymph. But what is the purpose of lymph? Does the lymph perform any specific function or it is just the leaked out plasma and that's all and we have just given a new name called lymph. It is not like that. These lymphs actually again they also have a network of vessels in a very similar way the blood has. For example, blood has different blood vessels, right? Whether you talk about the arteries or you talk about the veins or you talk about the capillaries and they all have a specific pattern how they carry the blood. Similarly, the lymph also has a complete lymphatic system and in that lymphatic system there are specialized vessels to carry the lymph and the lymph also serves a special purpose. So let us try to understand the lymphatic system. Now from our previous lesson we saw that this is how the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood flows in our body. This is the heart, this is heart. So from heart, the oxygenated blood reaches the different tissues of the body. See, these are the body tissues. But from the body tissues, the deoxygenated blood again goes back to the heart and the heart pumps it back to the lungs where the deoxygenated blood gets converted into oxygenated blood because lungs are the places where oxygen is taken in from the atmosphere. So the blood is oxygenated and the oxygenated blood is sent back to the heart. So this is how oxygenated and deoxygenated blood Blood flows in our body with due to the circulatory system or with the help of blood we can say. Now where is the lymphatic system? So we if, if first try to understand where is this lymphatic system associated in our body. Now the purpose of lymphatic system comes into picture for unidirectional flow from body tissues to the heart and why do we need it that's because here when the exchange of gases actually take place or when the blood actually reaches the body tissues what is this area actually this area doesn't consist of one single tube like structure as is shown in this figure this figure is a simplified figure now here actually a network of capillaries exist somewhat like this so this is a different version of the same diagram. So if you see, this is not a single tube. It is actually arteries which break down into arterioles, which, which further break down into thinner capillaries. Similarly, this side it is a vein which breaks down into venules and further break down into capillaries. So these are basically the network of capillaries or the capillary network whatever you call it. So they are extremely thin tubes. Now this is the place where the leakage happens. So some of the uh, portion of the blood plasma or the white blood cells, they leak out. So whatever gets leaked out, they enter the lymphatic system. And this is this yellow color thing which you see here, that is the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system connects the body tissues now when the leakage happens from these uh, ca blood capillaries, the fluid or the plasma gets into the interstitial spaces of the tissues. So from there it is picked up by the lymph vessels and then it flows through the lymphatic system which takes it to the heart. So you see this tube gets connected at this place. So it is actually carrying everything from tissues to the heart. Now not directly to the heart but it enters the blood vessels again just before it is about to enter the heart. So you see this is the place where the blood vessel is entering the heart. So just before that the lymph, fat, the lymph vessels uh, gives all its uh, things to the blood vessel. Similarly, you see it also connects it from this place. What is this place? These are the lungs. So the lungs tissues are also the tissues of the body. So from the body tissues, it is again bringing everything to the heart. So that is why it has a unidirectional flow. But there is no flow from the heart towards the tissues through the lymph. That all happens with blood. So it only carries stuff to the heart, not directly to the heart, but it uh, it gives everything to the blood vessels just before the blood vessels enter the heart. So this is where the lymph or the lymphatic system plays a role. So you understood where the lymphatic system is located in our body. Right? Okay. So now we will understand the various components of the lymphatic system. For example, when we talk about the blood we generally talk about the circulatory system where we talk about the different blood vessels, how they carry blood, 
we also talk about the pumping organ heart so in a similar way we will now talk about the different components which together constitute the lymphatic system now before that let me tell you the origin of this word lymphatic what does it mean well it is a latin word which means connected with water now why is it named this way that's because if you if you actually look at the uh, composition of lymph as a fluid it is all water with some proteins in it so it is very as i said it is nothing but plasma and plasma was mostly water with some amount of proteins in it now in lymph the amount of protein is lesser than that in the plasma because only the smaller proteins are able to leak out into the interstitial spaces okay so now let us look at the various components of the lymphatic system so the first component is going to be the lymph obviously because there it is the fluid which flows throughout the system and this this is the fluid which actually carries everything along with it next is the lymphatic capillaries now they are very uh, similar to the blood capillaries that is they are extremely thin tubes where the fluid enters the system as i said the fluid leaks out into the interstitial spaces now from where should it enter the lymphatic system it will enter into the thin capillaries so these are the vessels from where the lymphatic system starts right then next is the lymph nodes now lymph nodes are swollen parts of these tube like structures now the lymph as i said lymph is the liquid this liquid enters into very thin capillary like structures and these capillary like structures join together to form tube like structures which are called lymph vessels and these lymph vessels at certain places will have swellings like this and these swellings are known as the lymph nodes now what is the purpose of lymph nodes they serve a very important purpose so lymph nodes are extremely important when we are talking about the lymphatic system because lymph nodes are the places where they have wbcs that is the white blood cells that is why i told you that wbcs are those blood components which are not only present in blood but they are also found in other places for example lymph nodes is one of them so in the lymph nodes you have the wbcs and these wbcs help to fight against bacteria or any type of infection and thus acts as filter for the lymph so the lymph is nothing but a fluid and that fluid will contain so many things it will contain protein it might contain some bacteria or some antigen or some harmful substance so there has to be a filter which will actually remove all these things so that is actually done by the lymph node and who does that in the lymph node the white blood cells which are present in the lymph nodes so lymph nodes are extremely important and then we have the lymphatic vessels of course the tube like structures which actually carry everything they are lymphatic vessels so uh, they are there are also valves in between these uh, lymphatic vessels which allow the unidirectional flow of the lymph so if you look very closely at the lymphatic system this is how it looks like now in this picture you actually saw these structures right so these denotes the lymph capillaries and how the entire lymphatic system is distributed in the human body you just see the lymphatic system like how we see the picture of the circulatory system where we see those red and blue lines throughout our body so similarly if you see the lymphatic system is also spread throughout our body with the help of the lymphatic vessels and the capillaries right so now if you have a close look you can actually understand where are each of these components located so if you see these are the places from where the lymphatic system starts this is the place from here from where the plasma which leaks out of these blood capillaries so the plasma will get leaked out and this plasma will enter the lymphatic system through the lymphatic capillaries so these are lymphatic capillaries right these lymphatic capillaries will join together to form these tube like structures called lymphatic vessels and you see in the vessels you have some structures some small small valve kind of structures so these valves actually are like they are flap like structure 
or you can say the door like structure they can open and close so they allow the unidirectional flow so once the blood moves from this direction to this direction this vessel will get closed so that the so that the fluid cannot flow in the backward direction so that is how these valves uh, maintain the unidirectional flow of the lymph and here you have some swollen structures and these swollen structures are known as the lymph nodes and inside the lymph nodes all the purification happens where bacteria and other harmful substances are killed so all these parts together constitute the lymphatic system thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.